Hello and welcome to EJC News Focus. An ageing population across the Western world is bringing with it an increased incidence of cancer, that's not disputed. But the implications of having so many more elderly cancer patients for the patients themselves, but also for our healthcare systems, may not be receiving sufficient attention. I've spoken to a selection of experts and asked them what they think will be the key age-related issues in their specialties. First, Richard Marais explains why ageing is an issue even in melanoma, which is often assumed to be a young person's cancer. I think, first of all, I should point out that melanoma is, is, is an unusual disease because it disproportionately affects young people. So a third of melanoma cases are in patients under the age of 50. That said, um, Cancer Research UK just released some very interesting data showing that actually melanoma is increasing in people above 50. And of course, melanoma is, ex is associated with exposure to sunlight. And we all know that, you know, it's much easier for people to get away now, to fly off cheaply and conveniently to warm, sunny places. And I think we're starting to see that, the consequences of that in the increase in melanoma. Melanoma rates are still increasing in the UK. They're doubling about every five or uh, about every 10 years. And people alive today are four times more likely to have melanoma than their grandparents were. So I think that as the population ages, we will see more melanoma in that age group. I think the fact that uh, women in particular, but obviously the whole population is living longer, is actually going to have some very big and important influences on how we manage breast cancer. The obvious one is, of course, is if people live longer, and because breast cancer, the incidence rises with age, it may peak around 70 or 80, but nevertheless we're going to have more cases. That's an obvious one. But I think there are more subtle changes. We've tended to, for example, not give adjuvant chemotherapy above a certain age because there's an association with an age limit of uh, shorter mortality, more comorbidity, etc. Uh, screening programs tend to stop at 65 or 70, and so on and so forth. That was all based on the idea that people only live till their mid-70s and 80s. Well, if they're not going to live to their mid-80s and 90s, Maybe we need to be rethinking a lot of the sort of ceilings for when we do things in managing breast cancer. The other really important thing is, of course, if you treat a woman younger, and her normal expectancy is now an extra 10 years, that's an extra 10 years to live with the consequences of that treatment because more women are being cured. And I don't think we have sort of strategically thought through all the consequences of the population living longer and how that should influence what we do with our breast cancer patients today. So we've always had the problem of an aged uh, population with lung cancer because lung cancer is a disease of the elderly. Um, smoking in itself is a process that causes premature aging both in the skin and the body organs. So age and the aging human body has always been an issue in lung cancer. Um, and in general, we've dealt with it very badly in that um, we um, have felt a lot of our treatments weren't fit for frail elderly uh, patients. So I think what it is changing is we now have more fit elderly people and by virtue of their long uh, uh, lives now get lung cancer, but they are a better patient than we were getting 10, 15 years ago. So their lung function isn't quite as bad, their kidneys still function quite well. So now we are actually treating more of them, but we're treating them with the same parameters that we assess uh, all our lung cancer patients. So not age as such, um, it is all the other bodily functions that makes um, a treatment for lung cancer appropriate or inappropriate. So with an aging population, we have more and more patients being diagnosed with glioma and glioblastoma. We have learned and seen that actually there was a fairly fatalistic approach to it and saying, you know, uh, it's a bad disease when you're young and when you're older, it's even worse. Is there any reason to do and to provide any treatment? We have had a number of trials over the last uh, few years and also some of the trials published in 2012 uh, looking specifically at the elderly population defined age over 65, over 70 and showing that these patients really may benefit from being proactive. And again, along the theme we've seen uh, over the last decade, 
that molecularly defining the tumors that we can identify the subgroup of tumors who seem to benefit from chemotherapy and that you would actually, based on the molecular profile, decide for an elderly glioblastoma patient. If he's MGMT methylated, you would go for chemotherapy. If he's unmethylated, you would go for radiation. And you would be actually detrimental if you used the wrong strategy. So uh, this is nice. But it's also a de-escalation of the uh, strategy. So towards the younger, we combine chemo and radiation, and in the elderly, uh, worried uh, about some of the toxicity we induce. We only use one modality based on the current data. And is there anything specific about renal cell carcinoma and an aging population? In the aging population, uh, we observe anyway a reduction in kidney function over the time, which is very well balanced, in fact. But when we uh, treat those patients with uh, targeted agents, we should consider that this balance might uh, might break in some way and that patients might shift in a, in a situation where the kidney function is not preserved anymore. So the kidney function, for example, is one area that, where we really have to closely monitor the, the, the older patient. The, uh, the cancer care will become more complicated because of the co of comorbidity, and, uh, which is there in a high degree of patients. Uh, and diabetes is a good example for that. Uh, of that, um, also often related to to vascular problems, uh, and in patients with diabetes and cancer, that is about 15 to 25 percent of the of the patients uh, where the diabetes should be managed well, besides the cancer management. And one of the problems is that that is not happening. And there are lobbies who fight for you know, geriatric oncology and so on, but in a sense it's not geriatric oncology you want, it's getting normal oncology into an older population. So in some cases, older patients should be receiving the same treatment as a younger group. In others, they need a separate approach. But more generally, maybe the changing demographics mean it's time to question assumptions made decades ago and perhaps to re-examine the programmes and guidelines put in place as a result. So with thanks to all our interviewees, that's it for this month's EJC News Focus.